Welcome everyone to German Tour Views. Today we have the fine ASCS 6.3 18 volt cordless drill driver set. This particular set was actually an eBay find that was advertised as new in box. Often I find on eBay some sellers tend to think that new and lightly used are one and the same, so I often take the condition with a big grain of salt. However, I was able to pick this up for around $100 ship, which is a good deal considering they go for around $500 from a normal retailer. The driver is marketed for use in metal screwing applications such as installation of metal roofing. It is designed to drill screws up to 6.3 millimeters or a quarter inch in sheet metal. It is variable speed, reversible, with electronic torque control and a brushless motor capable of producing 266 inch-pounds of torque. As indicated on the side of the case, this unit is assembled in the USA with parts from Germany and Taiwan, which is actually not exactly correct, and we'll get into that in a bit. First thing we'll take a look at is this nice case that comes with the unit. It is ABS and has a couple of cool features, the first being the handle that recesses into the case for a nice flush look. There are also these zinc-plated latches with the fine logo stamped into them. It was a nice attention to detail since they could have easily gone with a plain latch. Let's crack this thing open. Inside we have a hard front insert with the tools and accessories. It is a very clean layout and design. I'm glad they decided to use real foam instead of just using a thin plastic insert that would be bound to break over time. Everything does in fact look new so it looks like I lucked out on this one. In addition to the tool, the unit comes with two 5 amp hour batteries, a battery charger, and a small case for bits and other accessories. It is surprising that they would ship the unit with the battery installed. We can check the capacity remaining using the built-in fuel gauge, which gives up to four LEDs to indicate the current charge. The one installed in the tool looks to be at full capacity, while the spare battery is only at one bar. Inside of the small case, there is a hook attachment to be used while working on scaffolding and ladders. On the lid of the case, there are two plastic pockets to hold the documentation for the tool. It looks like they are using the paper as a way of securing the tool and other accessories since there is no additional foam in the upper lid. Taking a look at the included documentation, first we have the warranty information which states that it has a three year warranty. This is pretty much in line with most of the other power tool manufacturers. The next piece of documentation we have is the manual for the battery charger. The unit included with the tool is the ALG50 which is only used to charge lithium ion batteries from 110 volt AC. This is the same battery charger used for both the, their 14 volt and 18 volt portable power tools. The next manual is for the actual driver tool, which is one of those universal ones that uses pictograms to describe the tool and its features with a description only much later in the manual. So you would need to flip back and forth to understand the meaning of each of these diagrams. One thing I did see was missing was the exploded parts diagram that you would normally see in the manual. Luckily Fine does offer this on their service website, so I just printed one out to be included with the kit. Now let's take a quick look at the battery. They come in at around 700 grams or 1.5 pounds, so they aren't too heavy for a 5 amp hour battery. There's a tactile switch on the side of the battery that lights up a fuel gauge for one second that indicates the current charge remaining. The bottom of the battery case is covered in a soft rubber material so that it won't slide on a hard surface. On the back of the battery, we can see that this was made in Korea. Interesting to note that this was manufactured in 2014, so it has been sitting around for a while. The US patent 7554290 is actually a patent held by the Milwaukee Tool Corporation, now TTI, for the manufacturing and construction of lithium ion tool battery packs. If you remember a couple of years ago, Milwaukee made a big stink suing about 25 tool manufacturers claiming patent infringement. So it looks like Fine is licensing the patent from Milwaukee for this particular product. Using a meter, we can look at the voltages from the two batteries. The one that is almost dead is putting out around 17.9 volts. The 18 volt value will be the nominal voltage for the battery. Therefore, I would guess that this battery is closer to 50% capacity. So I'm thinking their fuel gauges must be very conservative about telling you when you should swap it out. The battery that shows full capacity on the fuel gauge is putting out around 20 volts. The battery would be putting out 21 volts at full charge, so it's not quite up to 100%. Now taking a closer look at the battery charger. As mentioned before, it is an ALG50 model made in China. So I'm not sure why Fine thought that the components of this kit came from Taiwan, since the batteries are made in South Korea and the charger in China. I suppose technically most countries, including nearly all of Europe, still officially recognize Taiwan as a province in China but I've never seen a product made in Taiwan labeled with a China COO. Plugging in the unit, we have a small amber LED power indicator to let you know that the unit has power. Inserting a battery turns off this indicator and turns on a flashing green LED to indicate that it is charging. A couple of things I don't like about this charger is that there is no latching mechanism for the battery. It is just a friction fit only, relying on the electrical contacts to hold it in place. The other thing I don't like is there are no provisions on the back for mounting it vertically on a wall like many other people like to do. 
The unit does charge the batteries exceptionally fast. It took only around 20 minutes to charge the battery that only had one bar remaining. Now onto the actual drill driver. I first see that there was a portion of the label torn off, almost like an animal took a bite out of it before it was applied. Now this could have happened after manufacturing, but I'm not sure what could have done that. I miss the days where a metal nameplate would be riveted to the tools. Pulling off the depth gauge, it exposes a quarter inch bit holder. An 8mm hex head bit is already installed. This is one of the common hex head sizes for tech or self drilling screws. These are the type of screws that you would use to fasten a metal roof. The torque control located on the top goes from 1 to 11. It definitely looks like someone at Fine is a big spinal tap fan. Very special because if you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? Next to the trigger, there's a big red label that reads, be sure the gun is not in reverse when attempting to drive screws. I'm guessing that this may damage the tool if you attempt to do this. Using a permanent label here is a total fail in my opinion. If it's really that important of a warning, then it should be embossed onto the plastic housing. If you really need to put a label here, then please use a removable label that doesn't take all day to remove. I'm sure I'm not the only one who would have removed this label. After scraping it off and using some alcohol, I was able to remove most of the adhesive. Now looking at the removable depth gauge, it is attached to the housing using a friction fit. Turning the end changes the depth via d detents that are built into the housing. The chuck has a built-in spring that needs to be depressed to properly set the depth of the for the screw you are driving. After inserting the battery into the tool, I noticed that the center of gravity for the tool is located in front of the trigger, which is not what I'm typically used to on a drill driver. Taking a look at this Makita driver, you can see that the center of gravity is approximately in the center of the handle behind the trigger. When holding the fine driver, it has the tendency to fall forward and rotate towards the ground. I then consulted the manual to see if I was holding the driver wrong, and the diagram provided in the manual shows the driver being held with the thumbs located well above the trigger. I think you need to be a giant to have hands that large to hold the driver this way, and it feels rather awkward to do so. The bits on the end of the chuck are removed by sliding the neural collet forward. You can use a standard quarter inch drive bit holder, but in order to use the depth stop feature, you need to have a bit of the correct length. The bit that is included with this tool is an 8mm hex drive. The scaffolding clip is attached by sliding it onto the top of the tool. I see a major design flaw here in that you can't access the torque control knob while, while this is installed. I'm not sure how they missed that, but that is another fail. This is a course of variable speed driver. There's no noticeable delay between squeezing the trigger and hearing the motor run. On some modern drivers, I've seen a quarter second delay in order to power up the onboard microprocessor. Now it's time to actually test the tool. Since this tool is meant for sheet metal screws, we will use the included 8mm hex driver to put some screws through some scrap sheet metal. These particular screws are old roofing screws that can't be used since the gasket is cracking on them. One of the cool features this driver has is electronic torque control that will actually cut off the power to the motor when you reach the set torque value. When this happens, you will hear a beep. To restart the driver, you need to fully release the trigger to reset the torque limiting function. Yes, you could of course use a regular drill driver for this job, but then you wouldn't get the advantages of the depth stop and the electronic torque control that you get with Fine. The advantage of this particular driver to other normal drill drivers is that it provides a very high torque at very high RPMs. The normal drill driver will provide only the most torque at its lowest speed setting, which is usually less than half the maximum RPM of the tool. You can definitely tell this thing has a lot of power. I only had the torque setting to 4 when I was driving in these screws, so you know it's going to be very powerful when you take it to 11. I did use this on another job, attaching some trim screws and some window casings, and it did perform quite well once I figured out the correct torque setting to use. And it wouldn't be a real review unless we voided our warranty, so let's open her up and see if there are any surprises. First looking at the battery, it is secured with some small torque screws. There is a plastic button in one of the screw holes that looks to be the security device for the unit. After popping that out and taking out the last screw, the unit comes apart. This is a well constructed battery unit with a PA6GF30 outer housing and a polycarbonate inner housing to protect the batteries. The battery pack uses 18650 batteries arranged in two 7.2 volt and one 3.6 volt cells. 
The 7.2 volt cells contain two parallel sets of batteries in series, while the 3.6 volt contains a single set of batteries in parallel. I'm guessing that the only difference between their 14 volt and 18 volt tools is the 3.6 volt cell. You can see wires going to each of the individual cells for proper load balancing when charging. The charge discharge control board is potted so there won't be anything to see here. The actual batteries are LG branded which is a pretty respectable brand of 18650s. They are not quite of the level of the Japanese Panasonics, but they aren't too far behind. This is definitely a well constructed and well designed battery pack. Now onto the driver. After taking out a couple hundred self tapping screws, we are finally in. One thing that is interesting here is it looks like the heavy gauge wires are going straight from the battery to the brushless DC motor. Only a couple of control wires are going from the motor to the switch. This means that there is some control circuitry built directly into the motor sub assembly. I didn't see any identifying markings on the motor that would indicate if it was made by someone other than Fine. The switch is from a brand I've never heard of. Defond. Using Google, it looks like it's a company out of Hong Kong. I would guess that this is a custom part and you can only buy it from Fine. It is nice to see a name brand capacitor, in this case Rubicon. Looking up the information on the ZL series, it is a 105 degree Celsius capacitor. They probably should have gone with a 35 volt capacitor in order to maintain the minimum 30% D rating that is normally done when selecting electrolytic capacitors. Since the voltage levels on a full battery will be around 21 volts, this leaves only a 17% margin to 25 volts. If the drill starts becoming flaky in the future then I would suspect this capacitor. Overall, I think this is definitely a good product. The issues I see with it are mainly cosmetic and human factors related. I know this model is not something that most people will get, but I did not see many other reviews out there for it, so I thought this would be a good candidate to tear down. Well that wraps up this review of the fine ASCS 6.3. 18 volt cordless drill driver set. Check out the link in the description below to the full review. If you like this video, subscribe for more reviews of German brand tools.